Hey guys, Kenneth Yim here. If you bought a pre-construction condo in Toronto or anywhere in Ontario for that matter, and you're wondering what's next, well, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about seven steps that you're gonna to need to look for when you get your keys for your pre-construction condo. So let's start with a little timeline. Um, you know, you decide to buy a condo and then four years later, four or five years later, it gets built. During that whole time, you're paying 5% payments at a time until you um, get 20% down. That's generally the case. It's plus or minus depending on the project. But let's call it 5% payments. And most developers, from what I understand of construction financing for lenders for big development projects, they usually want 10% down by one year. So that's why you will generally see that, um, you know, the first two payments are within one and nine months. And then the other payments can be stretched out a little bit longer, but I think they want it within two years. Now, during the pandemic, it's been a little uh, more flexible and they've tried to give more incentives for 5% payments per year. I, you know, from my buyers that I've been talking to, a lot of them actually love that. I don't think we're gonna see that. It's not gonna be here to stay because the demand is getting pretty crazy. It's pretty hot. Okay, so we're at this point here right now where you're gonna get your keys and that's called the occupancy or the interim occupancy. And it's also the same time where you're gonna, if you've heard the word phantom mortgage, because basically you're just paying rent to the developer uh, during this time. So this is uh, the rent period, let's call it. And I'm gonna tell you, it's actually not a bad thing from what I've understood. Because So here's how it usually works. So you have a building, right? And four years later, it gets, the structure gets up, gets built, and they're gonna start occupying people in there from the bottom to the top, right? It's gonna go like this. And once the whole building's occupied altogether, then that's where you can get the final title to the building. That's when the city says, okay, it's safe now. You can turn it over to the, to the purchasers and now they own it. So in Ontario, I think, I used to think it was kind of a scam where they forced you into it and you had to pay rent. But actually it's not too bad, right? So during this whole time, you're starting to occupy, you can still find a tenant in here. And this comes into play a little later when I talk about um, your HSA rebate. So I'll get to it in a minute, right? Um, okay, so let's start with how a monthly payment works. And I'm pretty sure you're familiar with this, but we got the, let me talk about it anyway, but you got the P, I, T, and M. And that stands for the principal payments, the interest payments. You have your property taxes and you have your maintenance fees or ma maintenance, right? Maintenance fees or actual maintenance for the property. Um, the nice thing about this is that your actual payments, let's call your interest payments from the developer is generally about 3% prime plus a little bit. Um, and I know you're thinking that in the mortgage, the current mortgage rates around 2% or so. And so you're paying a little bit more, but hear me out. Um, during this time, you're only paying this portion. So your interest on the outstanding loan, your estimated property taxes and um, your maintenance fees. So this can't go away. Um, this can't go away. This can't go away either, right? But the interest, you can actually get rid of if you decide to pay the rest of the 80% remaining, the outstanding balance, and you don't owe any of that. But that generally isn't the case for most people, and most people can't do that. Um, anyway, these payments work out to less, the, the ITM actually works out to less than what you would pay on a normal mortgage. So if you're living it for yourself, your payments will be a little bit cheaper. And if you're renting it, then um, it's actually pretty beneficial as well too. I'll get to that in a second. The taxes, um, how that actually works is MPAC, which is the Municipal Property Assessment Corporation. They assess your property and it generally takes about one to two years to get an assessment. They multiply that times the rate, right? So it's the assessed value. Ugh, I'm so bad at writing right now, but um, it's your assessed value times your rate. So how MPAC works is generally they give you an, a, a value and they multiply it by the city rate. And right now in Toronto, it's about 61% and they come up with an annual tax rate, right? Um, during that time of occupancy, this period, I think it usually lasts about six to eight months, depending on the, the scale of the project. Um, so you could see that when the tax finally gets assessed, then, um, 
it's after the project closing, right? So your lawyer should be able to give you a refund on that amount and make sure you ask for that from their lawyers um, so you, you get your money back uh, if you've already prepaid into your taxes. Um, this is called the occupancy fee, which is like monthly rent slash um, the phantom mortgage. Uh, the maintenance fees, you're going to pay that. It's already calculated as part of your declaration, your condo declaration when you first purchase the place. Ask your lawyer to calculate that number for you. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what your occupancy fees are calculated out of and property taxes as well too. Okay, so now let's talk about during this time when you're finding a tenant, right? During this interim occupancy time, if you choose to rent it out. The good thing about that is that your, the, like, so the problem is that you have a lot of people competing. Like most of the people that buy into pre-construction are investors. I don't know what the exact percentage is. No one really knows. Let's call it 50%. Um, so you're gonna be competing with a lot of units to, uh, to, to lease it out. And during that time, if you're a tenant, you're gonna find a good deal because you're competing with a lot of people. So there's a lot of inventory. And then also on top of that, you can be dealing with kind of a bit of construction noise and it kind of, it's not so nice to live in. It's not so pleasant, but the bonus is that you get cheaper rent, All right? So keep that in mind for the first tenant, you might have a little lower rent, um, but that's not too bad in the grand scheme of things. Okay. So let me talk about HST. Actually, you might not think that there's HST involved in the purchase price, but there actually is. So let's just say, for example, you got a nice uh, purchase of 698, 900. Okay. So that's the pr price you paid for it. How that actually works is there's something called the stated price net of rebates. All right, so that number works out to 639734.51. Okay, so this is the price that you're actually gonna calculate your land transfer taxes on. You're gonna calculate um, anything, but it's basically called the consideration price. So then at this point, you'll be paying HST, which at this moment in time is 13% which is equal to 83,165.48. Now, before you come yell at me and say, I didn't budget for this HST, you didn't tell me about HST, well, I'm telling you about it now. So um, don't think of it as HST on top of this amount, because that's not the case. It's actually on this amount, okay? So let me clear this up a little bit. All right, so that's HST. And then what happens is if you, uh, the total amount here would be 722,900. It's called subtotal. All right, so let me get to the HST um, rebates here. There's two ways that you can claim an HST rebate. You can either live in it yourself or you can rent it out for minimum minimum one year. Then you can submit your AR HST rebate form to the CRA and they will issue you a rebate of, of uh, $24,000 maximum, depending on the purchase price. Nowadays, all the condos in Toronto pretty much meet that threshold. So you're looking at the maximum. It's actually not the CRA. If you're, if you're looking at the forms, it's actually kind of confusing. It's Ontario that offers you that rebate back as a rental rebate uh, because the Canadian government, the federal government gives you a rebate if you're living it yourself. The other thing is to consider is if you left it vacant, then there is no rebate. Um, I think that is, there's a whole bunch of reasons for that. But anyway, just keep that in mind. Don't leave it vacant, rent your place out and uh, make sure it gets utilized. Okay, so let's talk about the rebate here. That's less 24,000. So magically the total works out to 698,900. Look at that math. All right, I um, hope that makes sense. The consideration price, this is the price they're using to calculate on everything, um, on land transfer taxes, on your, <laughs> on all that. So this is something to pay attention to because if you're not budgeting for this extra 24,000 to pay up front, then um, you should be if you're gonna rent it out because uh, that's an extra expense on top of the development charges and all that kind of stuff that you're not expecting or may or may not be expecting. And uh, hopefully if you bought a pre-construction, you cap those levies, it's, things like 
you know, park levies, um, section 98, I think section 39, section 39 development charges. They passed that the city, basically, uh, the city and the province charges the developer for creating these new units. Uh, it's how they make the money. It's something to, you know, consider for extra schools that then put, you know, sewers, things like that. The developer generally will cap them because as a purchaser, you don't know what those costs are. They will transfer to you, which, you know, I get why they do that. But ultimately, you should ask for a cap so that you limit the amount. Um, in current times right now, we're talking about around 12,000 or so for a one bedroom and 15,000 for a two bedroom. Those numbers can change. They're probably gonna go up in the future years. We're in 2021 right now. Um, so you have to make sure you consider that amount and the extra kind of levies as well too, as well. So let's call it, I don't know, 12 to 20K, let's call it. All right, so you gotta look for this number, looking for this number, and then also the stated price net of rebates, and of course the HST as well. Okay, so if you're non-resident of Canada, I want you to pay attention to the NRST, which I'm sure you've heard of. It's the non-resident speculation tax. If your agreement is written before 2017, then I don't believe you have to pay it, but afterwards you do. And that actually works out to 15%, right? Um, if you own a property jointly with somebody, then, if you say it's 50-50, then you'd pay 50% of the 15% payable of the uh, the consideration price. That's the number you're using, if you remember that. Um, but let's talk about the rental income. So rental income is income, it's just that, it's taxable. Uh, what would happen is that the government wants you, the Canadian government wants to remit 25% of your uh, gross rental income to the government uh, every month so let's just say you have an example of $2,000 per month as rental income. 500 of that, you'd have to remit to the CRA um, every month. At the end of the year, you have $6,000 in their bank accounts. You file your taxes, you deduct all your expenses, and then you get the remaining balance back. Um, that's just to make sure that they, they, you pay your income taxes on it. Um, I don't know why they chose 25%. I guess it's probably the lowest marginal tax rate. I'm not an accountant, so check with your accountant. Um, and then the other thing you can do in year two is that if you say, well, that's going to mess up my cash flow. Well, uh, you can file for the NR6, which basically allows you to pay, oops, which allows you to pay 25% of your net rental income after expenses. So, so you can see that, that that helps a lot more. This is when you get the NR6 form, uh, but until then you have to file your non-resident taxes at 20, non-resident withholding taxes at 25% of what you get as rental income. Hopefully that makes sense. It's just a couple things to make sure that you're aware of. Um, the biggest confusion that I get is the interim occupancy versus final closing and what the difference is. If you have any questions, you know where to reach me. Just feel free to reach out and uh, let's chat more. Turn it up.